flash in. We're live. Good. Okay, so the last test, last review. Okay, number one it says rewrite in standard form and graph this circle. So we did circles a couple of weeks ago, so it's been a while, but the notes were this. Take the x's, put the x's together. So I'm going to go x squared minus 10x. And I like to leave a little spot because I'm going to fill that spot. Plus, but my y, y squared plus 6y. I'm going to leave a little spot. Equals, because I'm going to bring over the 18. I've got to bring c to the other side. So equals a negative 18, okay? So I put the x's together. I put the y's together. I leave a little place because I'm going to fill that in. Leave a place because I'm going to fill that in. And I bring c to the other side, okay? Now, we're going to take, I'm going to say it, we're going to we take one half of this number and square it. We're going to take one half of this number and square it, okay? So one half, one half of 10 is 5, but 5 squared is 25. So we'll go plus 25. So we're going to take one half of b and we square it. Okay, then I've got to keep the equation balanced. So if I add 25 to this side, I have to add 25 to that side. Okay, I'm taking half, half this number. Half this is 3, half this number is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So I go plus 9, and again, I have to keep it balanced. So I go plus 9 over here. All right, now, when we do that, the whole point is that it will factor. Okay, it's going to factor, which I like that. So the next step is just to factor this, okay? So factor, and this factors into a x minus 5, x minus 5. But the y's will factor into a y plus 3 and a y plus 3. Oh, let's see, is that 16? Negative 18, we got a negative 18 plus 25 plus 9, yeah, 16, equals 16. Okay, now the reason we factored and did all of this craziness is because this will start to look like a circle. We'll get an x minus 5 squared plus a y plus 3 quantity squared equals 16. And from that form, we know the center of my circle is at positive 5, negative 3. And the radius of the circle is at the square root of 16, which is, of course, 4. Okay, I'll let you catch up, and I'm going to grab some graph paper. So to graph it, that's not a problem. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. So there's my center of my circle. And then I'm going to just put in my radius. So if my radius is four, we'll go out four, back four, up four, down four. One, two, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'll just graph it in. There it is. Ta-da! Okay. I'll wait for you and give me thumbs up when you're ready. Number two, exact value. So when it says exact value, I want answers like square roots, right? I don't want answers that are um, decimal. So tangent 4 pi thirds. So I'm going to go to the unit circle because it says on the unit circle. So I'm going to go to my unit circle, and I'm looking for 4 pi thirds. 4 pi 
pi thirds, which is here. Okay, 4 pi thirds here. And my tangent values are the ones on the outside. So we're going to take square root of 3, okay? That's the answer, okay? If you give me a 1.73, blah, 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 I'm just going to mark it wrong. Now, cosine of 450, well, that's got to be around the circle and something. So let's see, 360 plus, I think, 90, right? I think it's 360 plus 90. Cosine is the x value. So if I go 360 degrees plus 90 more, it puts me here, right? 360 degrees plus 90 more puts me here. If I want the cosine, the cosine is the x value, which is 0. Now, cosecant is not on the inner circle, but sine is. And cosecant is really 1 over the sine value. Okay? Cosecant is the inverse, the reciprocal of sine. So then I'm looking for negative 3 pi pi force, which that's a back that's backwards, okay? So it's a rotation. Okay, 1 fourth, 2 fourth, 3 fourths, right here. That's negative 3 pi force. Negative 1 fourth, negative 2 fourths, negative 3 fourths. Or rotate positive 3 pi force puts me to here. You see that rotation? But if I go backwards, it puts me here. So here's where I want to be. And I'm looking for, I think, the sine value, which is the y value. So I'm going to have 1 over this, okay? So I'm going to have a 1 over negative square root of 2 over 2. And if you have 1 over any fraction, it just flips it, takes the fraction, it flips it. And I would take that answer. There's a better answer, but I would take that answer. I would take that answer. Okay, number five. We're actually going to write an equation. So if we take a look at the notes that we had on Friday, we had two things. We had a graph that looked like this. And that was our sine graph, okay? In fact, I'll show you that in a second. Okay. That was a sine. And we had a graph that looked like this. And that was a cosine. In fact, I'll show you. This is what we did on Friday. They both looked at like this sine. We see sine's like doing a roller coaster. You start up and you go up and then down. And the cosine's like a water slide. You've got to go up and you start at the top, okay? So if I take a look at this graph, and I can start anywhere I want, but if we start, we're kind of starting up. So the cosine looks like a cosine, doesn't it? Because you're starting up here. So we're going to call this a co cosine because it's right an equation. So I'm okay. I'm going to call this y equals some a cosine bx. Okay, that's the equation I want to use. Okay, I know at least it's a cosine. I've got some of it. A is the amplitude. A is the amplitude. Okay, so a is the amplitude. And it goes up one half, down one half. So the amplitude is definitely one half. See, it has a height of one half. So I'm going to go y equals one half cosine. Now b, b is always 2 pi divided by the width. That's the frequency, OK? b is always 2 pi divided by the width. Well, the width of this graph is pi. I mean, because then it goes from here to here, right? one ride and then it repeats and repeats repeats but the width the width of one curve from there to there is pi so to find b b is going to equal 2 pi divided by the width which is pi which is just 2 this is the equation for that graph Okay, now hopefully, yes, Ellie, question? Yeah, I'll slow down for a second. I absolutely will. Yeah, don't let me get going too fast. Don't let me be a turbo, Mr. Davies, okay? Thumbs up when you're ready, Elliot, but I won't go until you're ready. Okay. You good? OK, 
Okay, now, before I do six, I go back into my notes, and we did this. Sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. We want to use these ratios to do this problem. So somewhere on this circle, we have a point. We know every point has an x and a y value. So I know this, that my x value is negative 3, and my y value is negative 4. Okay, I know that. What I don't know, what I don't know is the radius. So what we found in our notes is that we could find the radius by Pythagoras' theorem. But instead of a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we had x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Okay, we learned that in our notes. So I'm going to find r by going x squared plus y squared, whoops, sorry, negative 4 squared, my bad, equals r squared. So I need to find the value of r. I need to find r. So I get 9 plus 16 equals r squared because negative 3 squared is 9 and negative 4 squared is, 20, is 16. 9 plus 16 is 25. Of course, if I square root squared, r is equal to 5. Okay, I'm going to put that over here. r equals 5, okay? I'm running out of room, but I can squeeze it in. Okay, now, you ready? I'll wait for you. So I've got x for my point. I have y for my point. I found r by Pythagoras' theorem. And then I want to use is just these ratios, right? I've got y over r, x over r. So I just take these values I get it. So sine of theta is equal to y over r, which would be the negative 4 over 5. Cosine of theta, which is r over or x over r, and that's going to be my negative three over five. Tangent of theta, which is the y over the x, is going to be my negative four over negative three, which is really four thirds, right? Because negative divided by negative. Now, the cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So cosecant of theta is going to be 5 over negative 4. The secant, which is the reciprocal of cosine, is going to be 5 over negative 3. And cotangent, which is the reciprocal of tangent, is going to be 3 over 4. Okay, so I got them all. How am I doing? I'm Ellie? Sure. Yes? So, on the cotangent, is it 3 over 4? Does that change from negative 3 over 4? You know, if you put negative, negative, I would take it. You just have to be, what I did right here, you'll see it. I've got the negative divided by negative right. is a positive, right? So that's all I did is I just took this one, I flipped it. If you made, if you didn't take out the negatives, I wouldn't mark it wrong because certainly you know what you're doing, right? Okay. But I don't like to mark things wrong that are math errors of a different math type, right? Okay, number seven. How do you graph this? We're going to go back and take a look at a cosine, okay? Here's my cosine. That's what my cosine looks like this. Okay, so I want this shape. We're going to graph this shape. So I do know that what I'm going to do is my cosine, I'm just going to put a rough sketch of it so I know what it looks like. All right? I know the amplitude is negative, but it's negative 2, so it's upside down. So I do know that the whole thing is going to be upside down. So when I start to put in my axes, let's see here. Uh -huh. Where's my ruler? Okay, I'm going to do this kind of thing here. I do know at least this much. I'm going to start right here. Look like this. So before I do a lot, I know I'm going to go 2 and negative 2. That's my amplitude, okay? My frequency is 3.
which means I got three curves. I got to have three curves in here. So I'm going to take my 2 pi, which is my normal frequency. So I'm going to take this curve, and I want three of them in here, okay? So I've got this curve, and I'll put three of them in here. The only way I can do that is to chop the 2 pi up into thirds. So I'm going to take my 2 pi and divide it by 3. So each curve, one curve goes from 0 to 2 pi thirds. So instead of going by pi halves, I'm going to go by thirds. So watch, I'm going to do this, okay? I'm going to go pi thirds. It's a little bit different than what we did yesterday or on Friday, but we need thirds, okay? 2 pi thirds, 3 pi thirds, 4 pi thirds, 5 pi thirds, and 6 pi thirds. And if I chop them up into 2 pi thirds, 2 pi thirds, 2 pi thirds, I'll get 3 of them. That's my frequency. Okay, I'll say it again. I'm take this shape, that's my cosine curve. I'm going to go here, here, and here, except for upside down. Except for upside down. So again, like I talked on Friday, there are five important points that make it easy to grab, okay? So, I'm going to have, this thing's going to be upside down, actually. It's going to look more like this. And I need these important points here, okay? So, it's going to start down at negative 2. It's going to end at negative 2. Halfway through, it's going to be up at, at 2. It's in between points are here and here, okay? So, I'm taking this shape and putting it between 0 and 2 pi, okay? put down its beginning point, its ending point, its halfway point is a maximum, and then the one-fourth of the way and three-fourths away are intercepts, okay? And I just sketch one curve in. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing again because I need three of these because it's my frequency. Take the same shape, starts down at negative two, ends at negative two, halfway through its maximum is at pi, here and I can sketch in a second curve. And then finally, we're going to do a third curve. Start down here and here, up here, five pi thirds. And there we go. What's the period of the function? It is two pi thirds. That's the period of the function is two pi thirds. Two pi thirds is the width of one curve, and the width of this one curve is two pi thirds. That was a little bit harder. That'll be the probably the hard one on the test. Right. Okay. Tell me when you're ready. Okay, number eleven, we're gonna throw out. I never got a chance to talk to you about that. We ran out of days. Aren't you lucky we got rid of that one, okay? But number eight we can do. Okay, number eight, there's two parts, eight and nine. There's a formula. We have, the, our formula is radian is equal to, and here's what we had. We had our 180 over pi, no, I'm sorry, degree, degree equals, my bad. Degree equals 180 over pi times our radian. I'm sorry, it should be a degree, you guys. Our degree equals that. Okay, here's our formula. We have this in our notes somewhere, but here it is. So to get our degree, we're just going to take our degree is equal to 180 over pi times 5 pi eighths. Okay, cancel the pi's, use a calculator, I can go clear 180 times pi divided by, oops, I canceled the pi's, 180 times 5 divided by 8, and I get an answer of about 112.5 degrees. Okay, so that's an angle in degrees. These two are the same, 112.5 degrees. Okay, 5 pi 8's, 112, same angle, one's in radians, one's in degrees, okay? 5 pi 8, 112, same angle, okay? All right, number 9. Convert 200, negative 200 degrees into radius. So our form is radians is going to equal our um, degree over 180 
times pi. Okay, that's my formula for that. So I'm going to go, okay, my radian is equal to negative 200 over 180 times pi. And I'd like to reduce this, okay? I'd like to reduce this. So that just reduces to, let's see, 20, 20 eighteenths pi or negative 10 ninths. Okay. These two angles are the same. One's in degrees, one's in radians, okay? And number 10, we've done umpteen times. Hopefully by now it should be easy. We'll do number 10 together when you're ready, okay? Everybody thumbs up? Okay, we've done this one lots of times. Here's my building. I just want to make sure we can still do right triangle trig. Here's my man. He's standing there and he's taking an angle of elevation at 54 degrees, right? Here's the building. We'll call it H for the height of the building. He's 100 meters away, 100 feet. 100 feet, yeah, it has to be feet because the man's in terms of feet. So I changed it. Okay, right triangle trig. It's a right triangle, correct? So if it's a right triangle, you guys, we always use what's up there, the blue. We always use what's up there. That's all our right triangle trig. We know that the building is the opposite side. We know that um, the 100 feet is my adjacent side. So we're going to use tangent, right? Opposite adjacent, use tangent, go tangent of 54 degrees, because that's theta, right? Is equal to the opposite, which is h, over the adjacent, which is 100. I'm going to multiply up the 100, put that there. I'm going to go 100 times the tangent of 54 is equal to h, and I'm going to use my calculator. 100 tangent 54 and I'm going to add in that's 67.4 I'm going to add in the six feet because I got to add in his height right there let me go ahead and highlight that so you can see here's my, my, my dude add in the six feet right because the triangle is suspended so plus six we get an answer of 73.4 feet is the building Okay, that's it, okay? Um, it'd be really great if we got it done tomorrow in class. That'd be awesome. Um, I could always leave a little time for you if you don't